Well, my next guest uh, has made what you would call a huge bet on Bitcoin. And for that reason, he frightens the establishment. And he's been an easy target for the media whenever there's a hiccup in the crypto world. Of course, this FTX episode is a lot more than that, right? It's an earthquake with ramifications far and wide. And now it has many calling for an end to the whole thing, all crypto. Joining me now, MicroStrategy Executive Chairman Michael Saylor. Michael, you know, I cannot help but think if Sam Bakeman fried had gotten the kind of scrutiny that you've had to deal with your entire career, this thing would have never have happened. But he's an Ivy League insider. They rolled out the red carpet for him. They put him on a pedestal. And now we're all wondering just how much we have been fleeced. Any idea yet? You know, it's quite the story, Charles. FTX, you know, they created a few tokens like FTT and Serum. They promoted a few tokens. They transferred the tokens to Sam's hedge fund, Alameda. And since the supply was largely in friendly hands, they were able to manipulate the price of those tokens up through insider wash trading. They eventually got it up to $14 billion in, in accounting value uh, through sleight of hand. And, and of course, normally the cynical Bitcoiners think, uh, you know, these crypto casinos are just manipulating the price of the token up to dump it on retail. But Sam came up with a particular diabolical twist to the entire thing, which is, he didn't just create $14 billion of air tokens through insider trading. He actually posted them as collateral and then went shopping for a $10 billion loan from a bank against the air tokens. And the only bank that he could find that would give him the loan was his own bank. So he applied for the loan. He granted himself the loan. And then he very quietly, in a duplicitous fashion, siphoned off $10 billion or more of real assets out of FTX and Alameda where they proceeded to spend the money on politicians and lobbying and stadium rights and advertisement and celebrity endorsements and condos in the Bahamas. And then they traded a bunch and made a bunch of bad trades and then they lost the money. Mm. And, uh, you know, here we are. It's just a really tragic situation. It really, really is. And I, you know, we always say this when these things start uh, that we hope we get to the bottom of it. I really, truly, truly am desperate to get to the bottom of this because I think it stinks and I think a lot of important people might have been able to help us out before then. Of course, though, that brings us to now the world again saying that the entire crypto experiment has failed uh, in part because the free money is drying up. Now, this FTX incident, the final nail in a coffin. But you still believe. Tell us why you are still so wedded to this idea that Bitcoin is the answer. Look, Satoshi had had a, a just a beautiful vision, a beautiful dream, and that was what if we didn't have to trust the banks, whether it's a, a, a conventional bank or a crypto bank, and what if we didn't have to save our life savings in a fiat currency that's collapsing in value? And so, I mean, Bitcoin is the world's most com powerful computing network. It's got 270 exahash of computing power, and it's got 10 gigawatts of energy backing it. It means you don't have to trust the FTXs of the world. So, yeah, I am a big believer because I believe that although crypto in this case may have been the problem, Bitcoin is still the solution. And Sam right. may have made a million Bitcoin maximalists with this crash. In the meantime, you are calling for registered digital assets to be traded on regulated digital exchanges. I got only a minute to go. Would that remove those, some of the anonymity that people say is an attractive part of this whole thing? I think for the industry to move forward, uh, the regulators in the U.S. need to give people the ability to register their digital currency, their digital token, their digital security, and their digital commodity so that they trade on digital exchanges. And right now, the massive confusion is nobody knows the difference between a security and a commodity. And in America, we can't trade on digital exchanges with all these things. So we're really waiting for the regulators to give us mm -hmm. a roadmap that allows us to move forward. Michael, you're one of my favorites in this whole thing because you put your money where your mouth is. You articulate this in a way that no one else does. And every time I speak with you and have the opportunity to interview you, I'm, I become more of a believer. So uh, you got to stay out there, my man, because uh, there might be a few more SBFs out there. We don't know. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Charles.